So this is part two of our series of videos on linear multiple regression. So for today, we'll talk about how to convert the results that we've generated from our JASP analysis into an APA formatted table such as this and such as this. But before we continue, I'm inviting everyone to please give this video a like if my tutorials have been beneficial to you. So I'm encouraging you to please like this video. I'm also inviting you to please subscribe to the channel because only 90% of the people who are watching this are subscribed. So please help me grow the channel by subscribing. Okay, so these are the two tables that you'll be needing for your report. Actually, I have text report here, but for today, I'll just focus on the content of the APA formatted table. So table one is basically your descriptive statistics together with your bivariate correlations. So of course, there's a label table one uh, and then bivariate correlations among the variables. You will notice that table one is in boldface and then the table title is not in boldface but in italics. There are several columns here. It's a matrix format. So first we have the variables followed by the mean, the standard deviation, and then the correlation matrix. The headers you will notice are all centered and then our statistical notations that are non-Greek letters, they are in italics. You will also notice that instead of putting academic dishonesty, attitude, and subjective norms here, I simply placed the numbers that correspond to these variables. So your variables must be numbered so that your reader can easily identify which variables you are referring to when you say one, two, and three. Uh, and then here is our correlation matrix. So all of our values are also centered. You'll notice that the table is also an open table. So meaning to say you only have horizontal lines that separates the header from the rest of the table and another horizontal line that identifies the end of the table. You will also notice that I have consistently limited the decimal places into two decimal places. The results are in three decimal places, but I wanted to make it simpler. So I had to round all of the values to two decimal places. You will also notice that my correlation coefficients do not have lead zero such as this, I've removed that. In the JASP output, there are still lead zeros, but they must be removed because based on the APA guidelines, values that cannot exceed one, for example, correlation coefficient, the maximum value is one, either positive one or negative one, values that do not exceed one must not have lead zero. So lead zeros were removed, but means they can exceed one. So hypothetically, if this is 0 0.26, then I would leave off the lead zero there because this can exceed one. And then, so I basically combined these two tables into one. And then for the multiple linear regression results, we have three tables based on the JASP output, but they can be merged also into a single table. So this is table two. I have labeled this as predictors of academic dishonesty. And as you notice, so these are the things that I've included. So we have variables. This is our unstandardized regression coefficient. The notation is B. This is our standard error. Beta refers to our standardized regression coefficients, our T values, and then our probability values. And then the upper and lower 95 confidence interval values around our unstandardized regression coefficient. So I basically copied these values onto the table, same as what we did in the correlation matrix. I rounded them into two decimal places. Uh, you will notice again that everything is centered in the header. The non-Greek letter notations have been italicized. Greek letter notations are not in italics such as beta. And then you will also notice that I have removed the lead zero on the standard regression coefficient because standard regression coefficients do not exceed one. There's also no lead zero in p-values because p-values do not exceed one. 
there are lead zeros, however, in the unstandardized regression coefficients and their confidence intervals as well as the standard errors because they can exceed the value of 1. And then you will also notice that instead of having a separate table for the ANOVA as well as the model summary, all of this information, I simply placed it here. So what you really just need is a reporting of the multiple correlation coefficient, the variance explained, the adjusted variance explained, and the ANOVA result or the F ratio. Where did I get these values? So these values are actually the degrees of freedom. So we find it here. So this is our ANOVA. That would be the degrees of freedom here, 3 and 520. 3 and 520. And then the F ratio, 70.14. Where did I get that from? I got that from here. So 70.139, I rounded it off to 70.14. And in the p-value, I got it. Okay. So take a good look at our APA formatted tables. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. So, you know, these tables are pretty simple. All right. So that's it. Uh, if you learned something, please give this video a like. And if you haven't subscribed, I'm encouraging you to please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So thank you very much. In the next video, I'll talk about how to write a simple result for this output. See you.